Okay, so this is a collaborative study, and the BISNIP is um, a collaborative study in uh, okay. that mm, is an NIMH sponsored um, multi centric study aimed to explore dimensions of psychosis based on biological measurable traits and genetics using a deep phenotyping approach. Uh, here, deep phenotyping means multiple phenotypes are measured on the same person um, in a short time. So they are more or less uh, accurate and very related one each other. <clears throat> Let's talk about the background of this um, work. The diagnostic um, um, categories of neuropsychiatric disorders contain a lot of different heterogeneous etiologies, including genetic, different genetic etiologies. So, um, for example, large collections of GWAS, like the PGC, they have a lot of uh, people inside, but the phenotyping is usually limited to diagnostic or very few phenotypes, like uh, age of onset or very common phenotypes. And as we know, this, these phenotypes are very complex. Some traits can be observed in healthy people, and then when they are very high or very low, can become part of a disorder. So um, quantitative traits like um, behavioral uh, traits that can be measured with the scales or clinical scores. Uh, um, the structural um, MRI, for example, um, volumes, um, jarification indices, um, thickness, from brain imagings are very strong um, quantitative traits that are very related to disorders and also functional, uh, like from the EEG and fMRI can be measured in patients and controls also. So these quantitative traits are a continuous line that can provide a very sensitive uh, line to detect uh, differences between cases and control and, and for that, this can give a lot of power for genome association studies, much more than dichotomous diagnostic categories. Say that. <clears throat> the BISMIP deep phenotyping approach uh, is, um, uh, is aimed to determine what uh, endophenotypes or subphenotypes are uh, related to disorders. In this case, are um, the psychiatric disorders um, with um, psychosis. Here we analyze uh, 463 different phenotypes from psychiatric scales, um, psychiatric and medical history, uh, DTI, and uh, structural MRI um, extracted with FreeSorper. So from FreeSorper, we had volumes in gerification indices, areas, thicknesses, and volumes from the CSP. <clears throat> the whole BISNIP sample contains uh, 2,400 um, individuals, but after QC applied, and because not everybody had phenotypes and genotypes, so we have to keep only those cases and controls that had um, genotypes and phenotypes together, we ended with this number, 1,100 individuals in total. Uh, from them, uh, 245 are bipolar, 186 are schizoaffective, 323 schizophrenia patients, and 361 uh, healthy controls. Uh, the male-female ratio is almost um, equal. Very and uh, there is, this is an admixture panel. We have um, uh, 654 uh, Caucasians. There are 375 African-Americans and 86 other ethnicities, including Asians and uh, Native American, Latino population, etc. Uh, the genotyping was done uh, from DNA from whole blood. The, using the Illumina site chip, there is a microarray that is specific for uh, mental disorders. Um, this contains half a million SNPs with, with um, maybe 60,000 uh, target SNPs 
or mental disorders. Uh, after the side chip, we made imputation to the thousand genomes. And after filtering, we had um, 4.3 million imputed SNPs. Uh, we use a pipeline from the road that merge uh, different uh, algorithms using birdseed, gene call, and Z call for the rare variants to be useful. The pre-imputation QC was the usual. Um, we also um, check the relatedness because we know that um, there were some uh, relatives in the sample, so we had to exclude relatives from the case control uh, approach. Imputation was done using impute to and shape it, and the post-imputation QC uh, was also the usual, but we used the minority frequency of 0 0.05 to work only with common SNPs. We ran genome-wide association analysis um, sequentially on the 463 phenotypes using Plink 1.9, using its regression model, with a minimum set of covariates. Um, we use sex and two PCA eigen vectors uh, for population stratification. Um, recent publications use more covariates like case controls, um, total intracranial volume, in, in, uh, status, the age, age square, um, etc. But as we wanted to have the same um, covariates for all the phenotypes, and we wanted to be um, impartial in this way, and also um, some of these covariates are related to the disease. We um, don't want to lower the, the possibility of detecting association with low side that differentiate cases and controls or that are related to evolution of the disease. So um, this could be responsible for the phenotypic variance. So that's the reason to use a minimum covariate uh, set here. <clears throat> After um, that, okay, here we have a, a picture of the uh, by dimensional PCI eigen vectors, where we see the, the green area corresponds to African American, the blue area to the Caucasians, and the red are the others, specifically the, the corner. This corner here corresponds to the Asian component. The mapping was done um, using the human genome uh, version 19. We um, use it significance threshold for a single phenotype uh, by Lee and collaborators that is 1 per 10 minus 8. This is a little bit stringent, but it's calculated from the um, functional and the, the this is related to the number of um, independent uh, markers in the thousand genomes uh, admixture panel. And also we use a family-wise error rate to correct for multiple tests <clears throat> and Bonferroni correction uh, for the whole number of phenotypes would be uh, 2.16 per 10 minus 11. Even with this uh, very uh, stringent ratio, we found uh, important and significant results. <clears throat> In a post hoc uh, fashion, we use ANOVA to test case control differences between groups uh, the different groups, uh, schizoaffective uh, bipolar and schizophrenia. And those uh, uh, findings that we have here. Uh, from the results, <coughs> we, once we ran the association, we saw uh, some significant and suggestively significant results. We consider suggestively significant anything below 10 minus 8 and, uh, and significant anything that cross the uh, family-wise error rate. So there is a number of, um, is one protein minus eight divided by the number of phenotypes in that category. For um, cerebrospinal fluid volumes associations, we found association with the temporal horn of the left lateral ventricle and the carbon septum pellucidum. <clears throat> um, both, uh, there are three uh, associations that are significant, and also there are additional um, suggestively significant results from these uh, phenotypes. 
from the temporal horns of, of the left lateral ventricle <coughs> is um, was significant for the neurexin one gene uh, it's a marker on the chromosome two um, the effect size of this marker is small, it's 0, 0, 0, 006, this is calculated by the eta square. But however, it's very significant and is uh, is associated with the, this trait. Also, there is another, um, another mark in, on chromosome 8 that was um, suggestively significant here. Neurexin 1 <coughs> Is a is a gene on the chromosome 2p16.3. It's a one megabase size that encodes a presynaptic membrane protein that binds neural ligands to calcium-dependent synaptic complexes in the CNS. It's also involved in the formation of synaptic contact. And <clears throat> copy number variants of this gene have been reported associated with schizophrenia. The second hit from the um, uh, GWAS was the Cavum septum pellucidum. The Cavum septum pellucidum is a space between the leaflets of the septum pellucidum that normally occludes in 85% of the babies by the six months. Its persistence has been related to neurodevelopmental delay, schizophrenia, and bipolar disorder. Presumably because of a reduction of the limping structures that surround it, the septal nuclei, the fornix, and the hippocampal commissure. So here we have on um, the screen two pictures of uh, carbon septum pellucidum. This is the most common carbon septum pellucidum in the anterior, and this is also named uh, carbon septum pellucidum or carbon bergai, that is uh, when it's uh, horizontal. In the um, trait that is captured by free surfer, this is named fifth ventricle. And we can see here that mm, there is a, a significant difference between controls and cases in the distribution. So the distribution, we can see a lot of mm, people having uh, no volume, no existing carbon cell to pellucidum in either controls or um, cases, but when the volume goes up, we can see that only cases are here. So it's, uh, if we add the three group of cases here, we will have a much higher uh, column than controls uh, here. So the, the column for the cases would be three times what control is. So, uh, here would be more than twice. Here also almost three times. So this is what we can see that this is significantly uh, related to the disorders. We can remember that we are seeing here only bipolar with uh, psychosis, schizoaffective and schizophrenia because the sample is only related to psychosis. So when we ran the association, we saw <coughs> um, the uh, important um, associations, uh, the P1 per 10 minus 11 for the LR P1B gene and RORA. The effect size for the first one is 0.07. It's again a modest effect size, but it's still significant. The LRP1B is a low density lipoprotein receptor related protein B. It's a um, gene on the chromosome 2. <clears throat> it's uh, almost uh, two megabases. It's expressed in fetal and adult brain and plays a, a role, a lot of different roles in cell function development because of the interaction with multiple ligands. And it's also a candidate gene for Alzheimer's disease. The second gene related to the carbon septum pellucidum is the RORA. It's a RAR related offering receptor A. It's a member of the NR1 subfamily of nuclear hormone receptor. This is um, involved in the circadian rhythm genes and is associated with PTSD and Alzheimer's disease and now also to depression. These are very small genes, less than uh, one megabase in chrom chromosome 15. 
So there are a lot of different uh, suggested uh, GWAS results from the gentrification indices. What is important to see is that they are <clears throat> related, of course. Gentrification indices are global metrics, and the gentrification index, index from one region is highly related to the gentrification index in another region. So it's not surprising that we found the same gene, for example, TARBP1, associated with different region uh, gentrification indices. Also, some of the intergenic regions are repeated too. <clears throat> Um, from the DTI, we found um, the fractional anisotropy for the left external capsule and the left cerebral peduncle is related also to two intergenic markers. Uh, the white matter volume is also from the Ismut uh, singulate white matter. It's also associated with an intergenic um, marker in chromosome 22. There are also some um, Mm, suggested association with CANS L, SL uh, and COLLECT-12 for temporal pole volume and the pericalcarin area. And something that was a nice uh, finding is to find again a marker is very close to neuroxin 1 uh, related to the age of first uh, schizophrenia or bipolar disorder symptoms. So the age of onset is also related to this gene in, in this sample. This is one of the advantages of working with um, this kind of uh, multiple uh, phenotype uh, samples. So when we run a co-expression <coughs> uh, analysis of neurexin 1 and uh, the first hit for the um, CSP, we found that <clears throat> this is also related to the glutamine receptor ionotropic AMPA2. And there are other genes that are mediators uh, on the relationship. Rora, uh, we didn't find um, in special uh, co expression in this uh, sense, but there are also co expression with neurexin 1 in some of the additional um, databases. So, the ventricular enlargement has been associated with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Uh, more than 40 years ago, Johnston and collaborators uh, described um, ventricular size increase in schizophrenia by patients. So this was also replicated later by the um, Enigma Consortium in several um, um, publications also for bipolar disorder and um, schizophrenia. So this uh, ventricle enlarge is one of the traits that is common in, in this disorder. Also, the carbon pellucidum has been associated, associated with schizophrenia and bipolar. So um, Galarza had a publication about um, the CSP in schizophrenia. Um, also, um, the CSP, carbon pellucidum, is, was detected in, in people with bipolar disorder, depression, and schizophrenia. And uh, also, Linda Lisi worked also in this um, uh, in this field and found increased prevalence of the CSP in people with schizophrenia. So <clears throat> these are uh, very enduring uh, phenotypes for this disorder, and now we have some genes related to them. So in our sample, both ventricular enlargement and CSP are associated with the disease. All the reduction of surrounding structures are also associated with disease. The GWAS didn't find significant associations. Most of the, uh, for example, the GWAS from the uh, hippocampus, they have um, sub uh, significant threshold uh, hits, uh, 10 minus 7, something between 10 minus 7 and 10 minus 8. What some people consider that this may be also um, an area to consider, highly considerable for um, results. In this case, our sample size may be a limitation because we are working with 1,100 samples, and some of these traits 
they don't have the 1100 uh, individuals. So, so for some of these um, trades, there are less uh, available samples. And also age of onset <coughs> was also associated with a neighbor SNP of marker neurexin one. So <coughs> these are um, things that we have to consider. We think that this is the first report of common SNPs associated with ventricular enlargement and cabum septum pellucidum persistence in both bipolar and schizophrenia. This SNP bear a modest effect size. The deep phenotyping approach that we have on the BSNIP study allow unexpected genetic sharing to be found between phenotypes, including the, the relationship between the temporal horn of the left lateral ventricle and the age of onset. Significant findings plus suggestive association with age of onset and gerification in this support the neurodevelopmental hypothesis of uh, these disorders. Well, from here, I just have to say thank you. This is basically the core of this um, study. And I would like to hear any comments or questions that you may have. So you can 